Hey guys, Jaybird here, and we're gonna be doing a tutorial in APE today, and that's gonna be covering how to make or port over your own custom textures. So this way, I'll just kind of go over two examples here. Uh, I'll actually be walking through creating my own, and it's gonna be used in the divide. So I've picked out two types of materials for this. Um, but basically, what we're gonna be going over is how to create a generic uh, basic material. I'm also gonna be going over how to create a blend texture so that way you can use them as blendable textures for patches and decals and stuff like that and then lastly I'll be going over how to make a metal texture so that it actually looks like a real metal in game all right guys let's jump in it all right guys so we're gonna be going over how to create some materials here uh, one really quick thing I want to just go over is you can actually go into your preferences settings here and I kind of like having the style of black. You can go here and check use Treyarch theme and it'll make it this nice black and yellow sort of theme similar to radiant black which I think looks a lot better than white so just a little tip there. Alright so we're just going to jump in here. I've already created a GDT, we covered that in the last tutorial so if you guys haven't checked that out I have an intro to APE tutorial so go check that out. Um, basically what you're going to want to do is right click on your uh, GDT and go to new material. So I'm going to call this, uh, so the first one is actually going to be a gravel. So I'm going to call this, uh, how about we call it divide gravel. Okay, so then the very, right, basically as soon as we do that, it's going to pop up, we're going to have this weird default texture, and it's going to show us kind of what we can see for the texture here, but you can actually go to this little, uh, blue and uh, red, the sphere and uh, cube there, and you can actually choose what you want the texture to render on. I like to go with plain because you can kind of go in and kind of look at it like as if it's a, on a texture on the ground. So we're going to be starting off with the basic texture for now. So for this, what we're going to do is just go, so we don't need to play with the material category up here, we're going to keep it as geometry, but we're going to want this to go as a lit material, so just a basic lit. So just select lit. So depending on what type of material you're doing, you're going to want to change your surface type. So surface type is going to be what type of effect plays when the player shoots it or walks over it. So that's basically all it's for. So since I'm doing a concrete, or actually it's a gravel, we're going to go with a gravel. So the gloss range is basically how, sh how the shininess of it works. So I'm going to also go with gravel for that as well. So the usage is basically where it's going to be located in Radiant. If you're not using, like if this is a material for a gun or a model, you can leave this blank. But if you want this to be in Radiant, then what you're going to want to do is select one of these categories for it to be under. So I'm probably going to go with terrain for mine because that's probably the best suited thing for it. Uh, so right away, uh, I've got some tiling options here. Um, I can leave it on auto, uh, but you can change that up if you want to. All these asset tags were basically left over from campaign, from what I can see here. So you can actually just leave that all, uh, you don't really need to deal with any of these check boxes up here. But color map, so this is what we want to set up for our texture. So the thing is, unlike the asset manager from World of War or Color before, what you would have to do before is you just put the texture name in here but now we have to create a texture sort of object and you can do that by clicking it right here and it will auto name it for you so it'll pop up with the little uh, window here so it's going to do i underscore and then your web or your your material name so it's going to create an image type so you'll see it made one here under my gdt so what i can do now is you can leave a lot of this stuff like default so it's an image but then now we just want to select our texture. So we want to click on the ellipses there. And I like to put all my textures that aren't related to models under texture assets. But the ones that are for models specifically, I put in model export. That's just kind of how I set it up, but that's up to you. So in texture assets, I have a folder called mega scans. And I'm going to be doing construction gravel. And it turns out you need to have these in TIFF format. So, if you guys have a program called GIMP or paint.net, 
or Photoshop, I suggest getting GIMP or one of these things because then you can convert these uh, images and whatnot. So I've actually uh, forgot to do that right now. So I can actually show you guys what I do with using GIMP. This is a free program if you guys are wondering. So I'm going to just really quickly navigate to my Black Ops 3 folder. So I have a shortcut that takes me right there. And then I have it under textures, mega scans, and the gravel. So I have all these, they're in JPEG format. So what I'm going to do is just drag it on. So this is like my little uh, color map. It's called an albedo map, but it's basically a color map. There's no alpha channel. So if I right click on it, there's no alpha channel. Uh, but all I'm going to do is just S export and I'm going to export it as a TIFF with no compression. So there we go, we got a TIFF. So I'm just going to delete the JPEG because I don't want to start making all these files for no reason. So this is an ambient occlusion map, which gives it the shadows and whatnot. You can see like all the darker areas in there. So I'll get rid of the JPEG for that. This next one is a gloss map, which determines how the sh where the shine of the uh, actual material will be so the whiter parts will be the shiny parts if you're using any uh, program that does that basically creates images and whatnot so I'm just gonna go back to this gloss texture for a second if you're uh, using a program such as uh, Quixel or uh, just something like that that's actually rendering out these images for you a lot of times you'll get something that looks like this as a um, not a gloss map but uh, oh man, I can't remember what the map's called off the top of my head, but it's like a, an inverted gloss map. But yeah, so you have to, don't have to worry too much about that. But a gloss map's like just an inverted uh, map for, what is it, roughness, that's what it's called. So a roughness map would have been that bright one. So if you invert it, you can get a gloss map out of it. So this is the normal map here. This determines your bumps and grooves on it, so it fakes actual bumpiness to a texture so even though it's a flat plane it's going to make it look bumpy like when you look at this you can actually see it almost looks like there's physical crevices and whatnot on it and then the specular will determine how uh how much gloss there is or like the color of the gloss i should say all right so that's all of our textures converted just gonna get rid of that last jpeg and then i can just minimize that so now we're just going to go back to C. So C is our albedo map. Um, could be named color map, albedo map. Uh, a lot of these have different names. So I'm just going to go texture, mega scans, gravel, and then the albedo map. So it's automatically set this up as a diffuse map, best uh, color compression. Uh, there's a couple of things that you could do in here. If your textures aren't showing up nice and they're kind of blurry, you can select always high resolution. I would probably only do that with view models for guns, but that's up to you. You are kind of have to think about other people and how they won't be able to play uh, with that sort of thing. So if we go back to our actual uh, material here, you can see we have this flat, very flat texture because all we have is the color map on it. Doesn't really look that great. So we're going to start doing the normal map next. So same idea. I'm going to click new uh, new image. It's going to auto do it for me. So I'll click OK. Everything's set up and it's set it up to a normal map this time. So I'm going to go back to textures and then we'll go mega scans, gravel, and then the normal map. So now if I go back to the material, you'll notice it's actually a lot more detailed now. And I can actually change the, the height scale on here. So this is what it looked like before. So I set this to zero and one would be with the normal map. So you can see it actually looks when I change the lighting and whatnot, the shadows actually act as if there's like a 3D uh, material there, but it's just a 2D plane. So next up, we're going to be, uh, so here's the thing. If we went with lit, under geometry, you're basically left with a color map and a normal map. So that's good for basic materials. If we wanted to go a bit more advanced, now we can change geometry to geometry plus, and then you have to change lit to lit plus. So this now gives us some more freedom. If you only had a color map and a normal map, you were fine with geometry and lit. But now, since I have some extra textures here, I'll show you how to make a more advanced texture or more advanced material. 
So we also had an ambient occlusion map. So now that I've set it up to lit plus, uh, I can now access this one. So I'll auto generate this one. It knows it's an ambient occlusion map. I'm gonna go to textures and then mega scans, my gravel and select the ambient occlusion map. So now it actually looks like it's got shadows on the actual grooves and stuff like that. So we also have the gloss map that we can do. So why don't we go ahead and do this. Um, I also have an extra specular map, but we don't technically need that. So we're just gonna be doing the gloss, which is this one here. So that's the last texture added. And that's basically what our material looks like. So there we go, guys. That's one material down. So that's our gravel material. So we can just save, control S to save all that. And there we go, we got this. So the next thing, I'm going to actually duplicate my material. Because what I like to do is create two materials. I, Well, depending on if it's terrain. If it's a terrain material, I'll make it make two types. So the second type is going to be a blend texture. So say I wanted to use this to blend on stuff. This first one's going to be a normal texture that you use for your everyday terrain. This next, the one that I'm going to be doing now, is going to be a texture that you would actually just blend over a certain surface. So you're going to want to go to material type, lit, plus, and then we're going to want to go with uh, transparent. So we're going to go want to go with one of these types here. So I'm probably going to just go transparent plus. So you'll also notice that since this is like a patch, there's no double sided. If you wanted to have your material double sided, you would. we used to have settings that used to cover this stuff here, the coal face and the blend, but we can't choose those anymore because they're done within the material type. So if I wanted to have my material to be transparent plus and then no call, I would have to find a specific one that actually says uh, which side it's going to be on. So you have to determine it from the material type here. So now that's basically done. We already have our blend texture. It was that easy. So we got two materials done. This one can be blended and this one can be used as a normal one. So next up, we're going to be actually creating another uh, material. So this one we're going to call divide. Uh, we'll call it faceplate because that's that's what it was. It was a faceplate. Okay. So this is my met the metal texture that I'm going to be covering. So now if you guys are creating a metal texture, this is how you do this. So right off the bat, if you're creating metal texture, you want to change geometry to geometry plus or geometry advanced, sorry. And then for this, you'd go to lit advanced. So a lot of the material types are really based off of the, whatever the, the material category is. So for this one, we're going to go with a metal and the gloss range, we're also going to set to a metal and we're going to put this probably as a floor texture because that's what I kind of intend to use it for. Um, same idea, we can come right down to the color map. We can skip everything at the top here. We're going to create a new uh, image here and then I'm going to go ahead and go to my texture assets, mega scans, and it was, oh, it was a thread plate, not a face plate. I don't know why I thought it was a face plate. Okay, well, we'll change the name of that. If you want to, here's a good, another good example. If we want to change the name of our material, you can right click on it and go, and we have a bunch of options here to re rename it, duplicate, and even delete. So we're going to rename this because it was, uh, uh, it was actually named something else. I forget. What was it called? It was a uh, thread plate. Yeah, thread plate. Okay, so we'll just re rename that to thread plate, not face plate. Or tread plate. Was it tread plate or thread? I should really just look at what I'm doing here. Thread plate, not tread plate. <laughs> I need to read. Okay. There we go. Thread plate. I'm going to rename this one as well. And there we go. Okay, so now you'll notice my color map's missing because it's still looking for face plate. So th the nice thing about this new setup is it auto guesses what you're trying to do. So I can start typing things in. So divide and you can see it's a color map so it'll only show up with all the color map stuff. So we'll just select this one here and it should be good. Although we're still getting a warning. I have noticed that it bugs out sometimes. So 
unfortunately there is no issue but sometimes you do have it saying oh it's missing the texture whenever you renamed it and stuff like that anyways the next material we're going to be doing is the ambient occlusion so we'll go ahead and go to textures and then mega scans tread plate and then the ambient occlusion just like last time we'll go back to the material the unfortunate thing is how our material is not showing up so I'm going to have to restart asset property editor because that bug is actually going to make it harder for us to to actually see what the material looks like so if you guys are ever having that issue just close asset property editor and open it back up again everything should be fine so it's kind of an odd bug but you know you can always get around it so here we go you can actually see our material now so I'm gonna switch it back to a plane and since we don't have a normal map it's very smooth doesn't really look that great very shiny okay so let's go ahead and do our normal map next just kind of go in order here and we'll go down to texture assets mega scans tread plate and then the normal map Okay, there we go. Now it's starting to look a bit better. A little bit. We've got some bumpiness to it now. So here's where the interesting part comes. We'll, we'll do the gloss map first because that's the same as last time. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, we'll go textures, mega scans, and this was exactly what I was telling you guys about. Remember how I said there's roughness maps? So a roughness map is actually the inverted gloss map. So what I'm going to do here is just open this up in GIMP and go color invert. Doesn't look that different, but you know, the, out, the grooves are actually shinier. And then I'm just going to export this back to where it was as a gloss. No compression. And I'll minimize that. We don't need this rough, roughness map, so I'm actually just going to delete it because we have our gloss map and we're looking for a gloss map anyways. So there we go. There's the gloss map. I'm just going to save really quick. So it's looking a bit better now. It's glossy in certain areas. Look at that. That's looking pretty cool. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to go over is this specular map section for... So since we're doing a me um, metal uh, texture, you have to have a metallic map. So when you're doing geometry advanced with lid advanced, uh, basically the specular map is set up to be used as the metallic texture or metallic map. So this is what makes it a PBR texture basically, like what makes it more photorealistic and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and create this. Nothing really new here with just creating a new texture, but we'll have an extra setting to go with it. So we'll go ahead and pick our metallic map. So it's not a specular map, so metallic map. We'll go back to the tread plate and you'll notice huge difference here now. Now it's actually looking like an actual metal grating here. But the thing is, it still could be tweaked a little bit more. So what we have here is a specular color. So this is what defines what type of metal that we're dealing with. So they already have a few presets here, and surprisingly there's a water one. So this isn't just for metals, but a lot of these are different metals that you can work off of. You can also click custom to choose whatever color you want to go with but you could actually just go ahead and just pick different presets and you'll notice the parts that are metal will try to mimic whatever the color that you picked is so let's say i went with a, a chrome we got like a chrome texture on wherever the metal parts are now and tin so yeah this is basically what defines what type of metal you're dealing with so you pick whichever one fits best. So I figure Chrome probably is the best one. So there we go, guys. That's going to be it for this tutorial. We've covered basically three different types of materials you can create. So a basic lit. Well, we went over the basic lit. Then we went over lit plus. Then we also went over how to create a blend texture, as well as a special type of material, which is uh, an adva a ge geometry advance, which is used for things such as water, metals, and glass. Alright guys, thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.